We're almost there, I promise. I know it's a long drive, but the further away we are from city lights, the better. Well, I did warn you we were staying the night out here. That's why I told you to wear something comfortable. <laughs> Have a little faith. You've been going along with my schemes for how many years now? And it's never gone wrong yet. This is supposed to be one of the most beautiful meteor showers in years. It's going to be worth it, I swear. Okay, fine. If it ends up being a bust, I'll buy you breakfast tomorrow morning, whatever you want. But if you end up enjoying it, you buy me breakfast. Deal? <laughs> oh, don't worry. We won't have to set up a tent in the dark. I put a futon mattress in the bed of the truck, and there's a bunch of pillows and blankets we can use to get cozy. It'll be great. Here we are. Ah. <sighs> Alright. Grab those pillows and throw them in the truck bed. I've got these blankets and the backpack. Come on up. Here, phone flashlight so you can see better. You're welcome. Grab my hand. <laughs> okay, get comfy. Want to share this blanket with me? It's big enough for the both of us. Cool. Now, there's snacks in the backpack and a thermos full of hot chocolate. <laughs> Are you all settled? Okay, phone light off. And look up. It's beautiful, isn't it? Perfectly dark night, no light pollution, just you, me, and the gorgeous night sky. Oh yeah, that is the Big Dipper. Did you know you can use the Big Dipper to locate the North Star? Yeah, see the side of the Dipper, opposite from the handle? Form a line with those two stars pointing up above the top of the Dipper, and you'll almost exactly hit Polaris right there which, coincidentally, is the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. <laughs> yeah, easy to find north if you get lost, and it's one of the constellations you can see all year round. Oh, I'm filled with astronomy facts. <laughs> you want to hear more? Okay, but you asked for this. See those three bright stars right up there that form a triangle? Yeah, that's called the Summer Triangle. Vega is the most visible of the three. It's in the constellation Lyra, which is called that because it's kind of shaped like a lyre. It's hard to tell because it's a smaller constellation, but it's there, I promise. The next star is called Altair. Yep, that one. That is part of the constellation Aquila, the eagle. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely an Assassin's Creed reference. Well, technically, the character Altair is a reference to the constellation, but you get the point. And the last star, Deneb, is part of Cygnus, the swan. That constellation is also called the Northern Cross because of its shape. There's actually a really neat story from Chinese mythology about those stars. Yeah, so Vega represents a young woman who was a weaver, and Altair symbolizes a cowherd. They were in love, as young people in legends often are, but their love was forbidden. <laughs> I know, never saw that one coming. So, they were banished to opposite sides of the Heavenly River, which, in this case, is the arm of the Milky Way that we can see. Once a year, on the seventh day of the seventh lunar month, a bunch of magpies would form a bridge to reunite the lovers for a single day. 
there's even a festival where they celebrate the story. Yeah. <laughs> Hot chocolate? Okay. Here you go. So next to the Northern Cross, there is a constellation that kind of looks like a square house with a pointed roof. That's Cepheus, named after a king from Greek mythology. See those stars next to him that form a zigzag? That's Cassiopeia, his queen. And then near her is the constellation Andromeda, right there. In between them is the Andromeda galaxy. Yeah, that spot next to her right there. Fun fact, the Andromeda galaxy is the most distant object visible with the naked eye. What's the story behind Andromeda? Well, there's a few different variations. So Cassiopeia was really gorgeous, apparently, and she made this claim that she was more beautiful than the Nereids, or sea nymphs, which really pissed off Poseidon, because they were known for their beauty, and since they were sort of his attendants, and he was married to one of them, he took it really personally. Right, because taunting a god always turns out well. So, as punishment for her vanity, Poseidon sent a sea monster to start ravaging the coastline of their kingdom. Desperate for an end to the nightmare, the king and queen learned through an oracle that the only way to make it stop was to sacrifice their beautiful daughter Andromeda to the sea monster. And Cepheus decided to do it. He chained her to a rocky sea ledge and left her there. <laughs> I know, right? Dad of the year. So, just before Andromeda was devoured by the sea monster, Perseus came by on his flying horse, Pegasus. You can see Perseus up there beside Andromeda. And that figure on her other side, yeah, the big square, that's Pegasus. So, Perseus is riding high from having just killed Medusa, he's on top of the world, flying home, and then he sees this gorgeous woman in peril and realizes he's in love with her, just like that and he has to do something about it. In one version of the story, he goes straight to Cepheus and makes a deal that he will kill the sea monster himself in exchange for Andromeda as his bride. In another version, my favorite version, that is, Perseus sees her in trouble and waits beside her for the sea monster to come. When it shows up, he battles it, kills it, and takes Andromeda home with him. In both versions, Perseus and Andromeda lived happily ever after. Oh yeah, they had seven kids. <laughs> well, sure, that's not ideal now, but back then, that was the dream. <laughs> Andromeda's parents? Funny story, that. Poseidon was a little peeved that Cassiopeia's vanity was ultimately unpunished, so he tied her to a chair in the heavens so that she would revolve upside down half the time. <laughs> In the constellation, the Greeks saw the torture chair that was used for her punishment. How do I know all this stuff? Uh, I just really like mythology and astronomy. <laughs> oh, look. Yeah, that was a shooting star. Well, technically a meteor. <laughs> What's the difference? One's a technical term. Are you just doing this to get a rise out of me? <laughs> well, you succeeded. And now for your punishment, more astronomy facts. Don't groan at me. You love it. <laughs> While a shooting star is burning up in the Earth's atmosphere, it's called a meteor. But before that point, it's called a meteoroid. If, on the off chance, a meteor doesn't burn up all the way and actually survives its descent to the ground, it's then a meteorite. Yes, I am a nerd. This should not be a surprise to you. I wear that like a badge of honor, thank you very much. <laughs> 
thank you for coming along with me. It's really nice to spend some time with you. I know, I haven't been around much. I had something I was dealing with. I know you're here to talk to, but it's not something I wanted to burden you with. And anyway, I've sorted it out. So I was really glad you agreed to come out here on less than a day's notice. <laughs> I just really wanted to spend some time with you. At the risk of sounding cheesy, I value our friendship a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that means a lot. I mean, you're the only other person who would actually go along with this. <laughs> I'm glad you're having a good time. Chilly? Yeah, I am too, just a little. It won't be too bad once we put up the second blanket and tuck under all the way. Sure. You want to snuggle? Um, yeah, I... yeah, okay. No, I, I know we have before, I just... you caught me off guard is all. I promise I'm down for it. <laughs> Well, this is cozy. <laughs> no, I like it. Your arms around me feel nice. My heart is not beating fast. You're imagining things. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, that was cool. You want a wish on a shooting star? Okay. <laughs> On the next one, we make a wish. There it is. Go, go, go. Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. <laughs> what? I can't tell you my wish. That's breaking the rules. For your information, I really want my wish to happen, so I'm keeping it to myself. What do you mean the rhyme won't work? Ah, that's true. That one wasn't the first star we saw tonight. <laughs> okay, what's your great idea, then? Oh, you think the wish will take if I close my eyes while I'm wishing. Know what? I really want this one. I'll try it your way. <laughs> and now we wait for another one. Are you holding on to me tighter? For good luck. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I don't mind. Are you going to make another wish too? Good. I don't want to be the only one wishing. There's one right there. Eyes are shut. Make your wish. Well, I'll be damned. Your way makes the wish come true. <laughs> Yours did too? I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm kind of sorry I was distant for a while. <sighs> yeah, that thing I was dealing with. I knew I was catching feelings for you, and I didn't want to wreck our friendship, but as stupid as it sounds, I didn't know how to be around you without my heart racing or you just taking my breath away. What made me decide to spend time with you again? I realized that even if nothing ever came of it, my life is better with you in it. So, 
I decided to accept that, whatever it might look like. Did I notice you getting flustered around me? I mean, yeah, but I thought it was just me reading into it. I thought you were turning red because it was hot outside, or grabbing my hand in the movie theater because of the jump scare. I didn't think... I didn't dare to hope, even. But I guess I have my answer. And we both got our wish. <laughs> no, I won't make you wish on a star for every kiss. I think the one big wish covered all the kisses that follow. <laughs> We should do this more often. <laughs> I meant the stargazing. <laughs> but the kissing is a good idea, too. 